As a very young man, Gordon Leach headed west from Ridgetown, Ontario to gain experience in the grain business, working for the Manitoba Wheat Pool as a salesman. After 12 years at the Wheat Pool, he was promoted as manager of the Ontario branch of the Canadian Wheat Pool and became aware of what he saw as needless transportation costs in the supply of western grain to the flour and feed mills of Ontario. When the Canadian Wheat Pool rejected his idea of building an elevator on the Toronto waterfront to handle western grain, he raised the required capital through friends and other investors to build the first elevator on the Toronto waterfront known as the Toronto Elevator. Gordon became the general manager of the elevator, which served as a storage facility and feeder plant for mills and processors across Ontario, and served to facilitate the movement of western grain to eastern Canada. This ultimately grew into what is now known as Master Feeds. When World War II produced the need for oil, Leach accommodated this demand by purchasing an oil extractor and developed a sizable vegetable oil business as well. To further reduce costs of western grains, Gordon raised the capital to establish the Northland Steamship Company with one original ship. And in 1932, he established the Upper Lakes and St. Lawrence Transport Company Limited with two ships. He served as the president and manager and his financial partner was James Morris of the Norris Grain Company of Chicago. In 1936, Leach built the Three Rivers Elevator on the St. Lawrence River and by 1937 his shipping business was one of the largest on the Great Lakes. In 1952, <coughs> he purchased St. Clair Grain and Feeds Limited in Kent County. And in 1954, the year of his death, he purchased the Godridge Grain Elevator. After his death, his son assumed control of the businesses. Gordon Leach's contributions to Ontario agriculture are very significant as they establish the logistics network used today by Ontario and Canadian farmers to facilitate the grain trade across Canada and the world. He created a complete grain handling system that supported the growth of Ontario farms and made Canada a recognized world leader in global agriculture. The legacy of Gordon Leach's vision lives on in the feed industry in Ontario and making him a most impressive inductee into the Ontario Agriculture Hall of Fame. He was nominated by Master Feeds and Anne Ambrosia, um, Ambrosia excuse me, is going to accept on behalf of the family. Anne, please, please come forward. fascinating the stories of the people who have uh, built this country and, and are still are, are working towards that and, and uh, I've been also given instructions that I'm to speak loudly and slowly <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I just want to say um, that on behalf of the family of Gordon Leach and standing in for my brother right now, Jack Leach, uh, I wish to thank the Ontario Agricultural Hall of Fame for inducting our father into its ranks today. The citation for the induction highlights his contribution in creating a complete grain handling system that supported the growth of Ontario farms and made Canada a recognized world leader in global agriculture. Now that's indicated in my notes as a, uh, uh, as somebody else's contribution. Uh, and I'm not quite sure who it was, I'd like to say quote, but it's, it certainly reflects my father's involvement and, and uh, inspiration. 
I want to say a word today about his direct, direct involvement in farming. I'm giving you this, I didn't, I was just a little girl when all this was happening, and I just want to tell you how happy we were. There were four children, and the farm was a wonderful, wonderful place to grow up. I want to um, say a word about his, my father's direct involvement in farming, his purchase of a 900-acre farm near Thornhill, where a variety of experiments took place to enhance the agricultural process. There were cattle, pigs, mink, horses, and foxes for that matter, and poultry, with tests for nutrition for each, all conducted in conjunction with the Ontario Agricultural College. In the fields, there were test plots of grain cereals, and in the mid-1940s, Massey Harris used the farm to test and design the early self-propelled combines. The employees of the farm became real friends, and the atmosphere was very much like that of a family. We all had a great deal of time, all us kids. The last manager of the farm was Doug Sherman, who is here today with his wife, June. Uh, Doug was the, the uh, last manager. I, I'm very anxious to mention his name because uh, I, I really, we really appreciated all he did to, to keep things going, and his judgment was so good. The employees of the farm became friends. The last manager of the farm was Doug, who's here today. Now, my father had a broad range of interests. He served as chair of the board of the Western Hospital and established camps for crippled children and sea cadets. His induction today is a testimony to one who made a significant contribution not only to agriculture, but also to the business, philanthropic, and volunteer communities of this province. I am very glad to be able to share this with you and very grateful for the recognition that has been given to, in memory of my father. Thank you.